Hi, my name is Neely Bartley. I'm so thrilled to be here at MassQ today with Kathy Fritz. She is a featured MassQ speaker. She's an author. Um, she is also the founder at uh, Creatum Set Go. So she has a lot to offer about project-based learning and design thinking. And I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to talk to you. Well, thank you so much for letting me uh, be here and be able to have a couple of sessions here at uh, MassQ. This has been really, it's, it's amazing what's happening here. Awesome. Yeah. I know there's so much going on even right now and a lot of fabulous sessions to attend. Oh, exactly. So um, I hear this is your first time in MassQ. Why don't you tell us about your experience so far? So yeah, this is my first time at MassQ and the first time I walked in here I actually saw people that I knew who are other design thinking and education people. Um, and it was great to just sort of connect up with them and what's, what's nice is that I get to be able to um, I get to hang out with some of the people I've been working with at MassQ. Um, I'm, when I first got introduced, um, Shelley Chamberlain and I sat on a plane next to each other on our way to ISTE. That's awesome. Yeah. That's it's, very cool. Yeah. So that's great. So it sounds like you're truly connected here already and the work that you're doing is so important with project-based learning, design thinking, innovation, and I've been coming to MassQ actually for seven years and I've always loved it here and one of the things that they clearly embrace is increasing global empathy um, and that fits so perfectly with the work that you do. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how MassQ has supported your work specifically? So I've been working with uh, three of the MassQ board members, I think they're all rolling off this year, mm -hmm. um, in uh, Natick, Westford and in Beverly. And we've been working with them on bringing their teachers and instructional coaches on understanding how to leverage the design thinking process and specifically project management skills and how to do project-based learning. And the way that we sort of incorporate empathy is that we look at how we can incorporate authentic end users, stakeholders, and experts throughout the whole project process. So from kids doing the research, to kids going and making things and getting feedback from the people they're making those things for, to understanding who their audience is when they're presenting. That's awesome, and I am lucky enough to be in the district of Natick, so that is oh, super cool. cool. So That's I'll great. definitely be yeah, talking Grace to Grace. Grace Magley is, she is an amazing person and such a great asset to MassQ and to the Natick school system. Yes, and I know she has some of the kits that I'm gonna ask you about in a second, so I sure. can't wait to actually try it out myself. Um, so, you know, design thinking, I hear about it all the time. It's yeah. a hot topic right now, super as hot. is project-based learning. Yep. Um, and so, I guess one of my big questions to you is, like. Why design thinking? So for people out there that have heard of it but don't know a, you know, a lot about it, why should they consider it in their classrooms or in schools? Sure. So I know a lot of people may have gotten exposure to design thinking through doing makerspace or STEAM or STEM kind of projects. So design thinking is a process where you work through empathy, you define problems, you come up with a bunch of ideas to address that problem based on your research, so based on the standards that maybe teachers might be teaching kids in classroom, and then you go and take the best ideas, and kids work together in teams to be able to make them, test them out, and making's not just science, and it's not just technology. You know, making, um, reinterpreting Shakespeare, and doing it as a rap, or doing it as um, a play, or making it more relevant to people in their own community, I mean, that's a product, and that's making. And you have to go through and iterate, and make it better, and do tryouts and all those kinds of things, just like you would have to do for if you were going to make a product right. and hand that product back to the end user and say, hey, what works, what doesn't, get their feedback, make it better. And then you might take that product onto a fast pitch as compared to a performance you might do for, you know, poetry or for or publishing for a book or a math competition where it might be getting ready for something like that. So it really works across subjects. It's fascinating to me, and I mean, just imagining being a student or a teacher for that matter, because I know you do a lot of this work with teachers too, right. um, I don't know that learning can get any more relevant or meaningful or real world. So exactly, that is very inspirational, and I hope um, as many people as possible catch on to this design thinking yeah. and the work that you've done with it. Mm -hmm. Would you mind speaking um, a little bit about Creatum Set Go? Sure. So Creatum Set Go, talk about a design thinking sort of iteration. I started out um, working on a National Science Foundation grant, and we had built a, a web application first. And it was very enterprise software, super heavy 
and just not very flexible. And so teachers got super overwhelmed because design thinking, you know, it's a it's a big shift in the way we do things. Um, so what I thought we would do is, as I worked with my teachers, they're like, hey, Kathy, can you just give us some graphic organizers for kids doing the design thinking process for project-based learning? And so as I was working with fifth grade teachers, we developed the Project Design Campus. Okay. And so the campus walks you through Ask, Make, and Share, which is kind of typical makerspace kind of speak, and then it embeds sort of that discovery and the presentations that usually happen to an authentic audience in PBL, and inside it embeds that design thinking process. So it really walks teachers step by step, and kids step by step through that process. So um, it really becomes like a project management tool yeah. and a project design tool, which I think what I love about what Buck Institute has done is that they give the great pedagogy and all the foundational work. And what we do is we try to help teachers take all that great information from people like Buck Institute and be able to go and understand a pathway and a workflow for how to roll that out. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And so, and this comes as a kit? It comes as a kit. Um, should I do a shameless yeah, plug? Yeah, do it. Totally so, do it. Because if I want to find it, where do I go to learn okay, more about so Freedom Seco? Absolutely. Here's the shameless plug. So here's the Project Design <laughs> Canvas. Um, first used with fifth graders at Centennial Academy in okay. Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. And then here are the project menus. And so the project menus are like your typical project type. So design challenges to things like people and places for social studies or telling stories for ELA, um, STEAM discovery, building a business. And then we have the cards, which are these little bite-sized pieces of information that are all searchable, like create a movie trailer or um, a business model canvas, which is something that's used in business for kids building a business. And you can go, kids can go and Google those those pieces of information, find out like, well, how do they use this in the real world? How can I use this in my project? So, and so this is both a teacher and a student using tool. Very cool. Yeah. And I guess my next question would be, and I only have a couple more, but sure. um, what would you say with uh, a tool like this that seems to be such an incredible asset for design thinking and project-based learning, what would you say um, in your experience just working with teachers and students have been the biggest impacts on, has been the biggest impact on students and educators? Well, I would say on the product itself, yeah. um, the biggest impact for me was, you know, I've worked with about 150 teachers coaching them and how to use the design thinking process for project-based learning. And about 150 teachers helped to refine this process and test this process in, in Kentucky, um, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, which is where the um, solar eclipse had its um, sort of, I guess, the main focal point of the yep. solar eclipse was in Hopkinsville. So I worked with their uh, K through eight teachers. Yep. Um, I worked with uh, Austin Independent School District teachers, and I worked um, with Centennial Academy through this National Science Foundation grant. So they helped to inform and help me to improve this. So this is built with all Title I schools wow. in mind. So, and then we're working with places like Natick and Westford, which are some yeah. of the top performing schools. Yeah. So it's not just for the exceptional schools to work with. So I find the impact is that it can be used with anybody who's new to the process and who's never played with this before and just wants to try something out, all the way to the experienced teacher who's like, hey, I'm trying to help my kids to do this now, and so I want to give something to hand over to them too. So it kind of works, in, it's a really beautiful and symbiotic relationship. Very cool. Um, it's just fascinating, and I know that you've done some work in India, and now you travel all over the country in mm -hmm. a coaching role, helping teachers bring project-based learning and design right. thinking um, to life. And uh, if that you know wasn't enough, you now have a new book. I, I, oh God, yeah, <laughs> the ultimate are, project planning guide. I know. So right. this basically was derived from the three-day. Um, institute that I run for teachers um, that takes you through the entire process so it's something you can put in a PLC or be able to go and do a self-study with so you don't have to have me in the room um, in case you know it's hard to bring me there so it, making it as accessible as possible. Fantastic. So if I want to learn more about this, I could come to your session tomorrow at MassQ, is that right? So we've got a couple opportunities. Um, I'm going to be doing a book signing right after this at the Barnes & Noble table at 3 o'clock today cool. and, as, and at 1.30 tomorrow. And then I'll be doing a second presentation tomorrow at 11.30 in Red 81. Okay, fantastic. And I imagine you can get information there about ordering your book. Yep. And there's discounts available as well if you come visit me right now over at the Barnes & Noble table.
Fantastic. Well, Kathy Fritz, thank you so much for joining us. I feel like I've learned a ton, and I'm sure all the viewers have as well. Good luck with everything. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Okay, take care.